Next question is from Ava Fit. Are unilateral movements more beneficial than bilateral movements? Oh, nice follow-up question. I know, right? No, they're just different and they have yeah. their own value. So bilateral movements allow bilateral means two legs, two arms. Unilateral means one arm, one leg at a time. Bilateral movements allow you to push more weight, generate more, you know, central nervous system force. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna build bigger gains in strength. Unilateral is great for stability. It's good for creating balance, preventing imbalances that can develop from bilateral. Stay in one for too long and you start to see problems. Unilateral stuff, you're just not going to build as much strength, power, and muscle if you only stay there. And then bilateral, you start to develop imbalances. So I'm going to go out on a limb <clears throat> and actually challenge it a little bit, saying that I do think that unilateral movements do have more benefits for something specific like just health and longevity. There's no, there's no doubt bilateral movements, so both feet, both arms, are going to build the most amount of muscle, which in turn could also burn the most body fat. So body, so aesthetic goals, you got to have both in there, and I think that bilateral you cannot mm -hmm. ne ne neglect. But if someone was just, oh, I just want to feel good, move well, uh, be healthy, longevity goal, there's a lot of value to unilateral. If you were to only do unilateral training, and there's some, there's a lot of coaches and trainers that that. Uh, live by that philosophy. Uh, you know what the downside of that is? Is that you can't know, get it strong. Well, no, not that. Not just that. But when I train, well, like when you train the average person that's deconditioned, mm. unilateral is a step above bilateral in a lot of exercise. Like I'm gonna take someone who's deconditioned. Maybe they're like 60. I'm there's not. I'm not doing very many unilateral exercises because they lack. They even lack the stability to do bilateral well. So to jump them to unilateral, especially for lower body exercise, maybe unless mm. I'm on a machine. Um, is going to be really hard. So, you know, I, I would go it's, unilateral, but I used to have to start with bilateral, especially with older clients. It's an interesting argument because I've heard this from strength coaches on both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, like a Mike Boyle would, will claim it's more beneficial for athletes to train in unilateral uh, work specifically because it, yes, the longevity aspect to it, but you get strong and stable and in, in a position that is more translatable. Uh, towards what you're doing, yeah. uh, either on the ice or on the field, or you know, you're you're just more you're, you're more apt to be in a split stance, or you know, out wide, or rotating, and and being able to drive and and get explosive forces, and be able to uh, stabilize in those forces is at the up is almost at a higher priority in, in his argument. Right? Well, and and to his argument, and he makes a great case on this. I mean, uh, most sports require some sort of running. And running is unilateral, right? Yep. You know, so uh, it makes sense that, and I can get behind that. Yeah, but but again, the, then now to, and this is where I'm kind of like in the middle of this because then, then the other side, it's like all about building that base strength, correct, and support, right? So you can generate more force, you can be strong and stable in that force, but the, the caveat there is that if you get into those split stance and those different types of uh, positions, you may not be able to be as familiar with that, which means you can't generate the okay. force in those positions. Here's where I'm going to debate him, because I, I respect him, right? Yeah. He's, he's a good trainer. Here's what I'm going to debate. What have we seen with the studies on athletes? When they're young, they're better off doing a wide range of sports. Yes. And then when they get older, it's better to be more specific. Now, we used to think, if you take a little kid and you want them to be a great soccer player, just have them play soccer. Just specialize the whole time. Studies now show that the kid who plays soccer, basketball, football, and gymnastics will be better at soccer later on than the kid that just did soccer because they, they built a wider range. They can of, problem solve with their body a lot more effectively. Yes. And so it's like, again, you could be good in one direction so far, but then again, there's repetitive stress injuries as a result. There's you get good at it, but at the same time, you don't have the ability to problem solve outside of that yeah, confine. Yeah. So if I'm training a younger athlete, uh, I'm going to go bilateral, general strength and power, and then move unilateral. As they get older, and this is how I used to train athletes anyway. Yeah. When I would train an older athlete, it was much more. My training was much more specific. You know, if I'm training a 15 year old, like I'm not doing super specific football resistance training if you play football. I'm just going to get you stronger mm -hmm. generally. If I'm training a college football player, like at this point you're in college, you're doing good, you got the strength. Mm -hmm. Now we got to work on the more specific application. Yeah, I think building a 
base, a, a foundational yes. base of strength and support is is at the utmost importance to then venture out into you know these unilateral positions, which will benefit the yes. whole. Well, I would just say, why wouldn't you incorporate both? Yeah, they both 100%. great you know, tools. Like, there's no reason. It's to, such a silly debate to me. Well, yeah. because that's fitness for you, right? It's, yeah. This is. I mean, that's why we get questions like this. It's always a camp. Which is better? One or the other. This is. I hear this from these coaches say this is better. This coach is this better. The truth is, if uh, the program that beats both of those is the one that incorporates both. That's yeah. why we exist. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you, if it's for the average person listening and watching right now, they both have tremendous value. And if you don't incorporate both, you're going to miss out on something. And that it means you're not going to reach your full potential. So it's not a which is better. It's a which is better for that for this specific person yeah. with this specific goal and what they've been doing, you know, for the last. You Look know, at four the months. appropriate tool and apply it. Yeah, because it depends on the person. I'll see a person's results and their workouts, what they've been doing and who they are, and I'll say unilateral for you. And then I'll look at someone else and say bilateral for you. So it's the, they're all tools. You're building a house. You got to use a hammer and a screwdriver and you got to use a saw. You got to use everything. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.